Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone doing tonight? Camera moved. Why did I move my camera? Let me just shift you a little bit over there. There we go. How's everyone doing today? It is... Oh, God. What day is today? Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It is Wednesday afternoon. And I feel... Goon? Good? I don't know. How's everyone doing today? No audio. No audio? What do you mean, no audio? What do you mean, no audio? Should have audio. Audio. Yeah, the, the little the little thing is doing the thingy. See? Hello? Hello? See? See? It's it's doing the thing. Oh. Shoot, is it that loud? I I'm hoping I've got noise canceling kind of going. Cuz that's running and uh, it's almost done a print. It would be done if it didn't decide to pause halfway through the night for five hours. So it would have been done by now. Um, but I recently put a stealth burner on uh, the switch wire. And the only fan I have is a crappy GD Stein 5015. And it's a little whiny. So let me... Uh, let's see if we can get, a little, get rid of a little whine. Is that a little bit better there, guys? Is that a little bit better? Let me know if that's a little bit better. We're going we're to lose a little bit of park cooling, but it's for your guys' sake. It's like tinnitus. Oh, so that's why I don't hear it. Better? Okay. There we go. How's everyone doing today? So, uh, for those unaware, this is part two of the uh, Trident build. Uh, make sure you like that smash button. Uh, if you're just joining us today, we're going to carry on where we left off. Uh, where we left off is um, we have the frames together. Most of the extrusions are mounted. Uh, we've got our AB motor mounts, our front idlers, our rails installed. And I think we're moving on to Zed. Yeah, let me get the music going. There we go. Dead air sucks. Okay. So yeah, um, if you're looking for fans for your stealth burner, um, use the recommended ones, although they're deltas and we gave them the hug of death and they, you can't get them anymore because the GD Stimes uh, whine like mad. Or who knows, maybe it's just the one I have. I have another one. I might swap it out to the other one and see if the other one doesn't whine. Cause that's the thing with China. You, uh, you roll the dice sometimes with their stuff. Okay, um, so uh, before we get too far, We'll do the, uh, we're going to do some housekeeping because, you know, we always start off with housekeeping so we can get it out of the way. So if people ask later in the stream, I get to say, go back and watch the beginning of the stream. Um, so, uh, this is the last stream of the year. Um, there should be a stream on Sunday, hopefully Sunday. Um, so there's that. Um, now there has been some things that have come to light on the Twitterverse. Um, Besides the fact that Twitter is cancer, like always, um, it has been brought to my attention and many others. A um, little bit of drama in the 3D printing sphere because who doesn't like drama? I'm I hate drama. So um, let me pull up the original post here. So TLDR, um, this picture was shared. Um, I'm not going to say any company names. I'm going to avoid saying company names, but for those that know, you know who this is. Um, somebody shared this picture, and basically it's showing... It's a blurry picture of what appears to be Fizek filing trademarks or copyrights or whatever for a bunch of names. Uh, Ratrig, Vcore, VZBot, uh, Voron Trident somewhere in here, along with a whole bunch of other stuff. Duet Wi-Fi, etc., etc., so what it's looking like is Fizet, who, full disclosure, they have sent me this kit for the review. I didn't pay for this kit, they sent it to me. I will be building the kit, reviewing the kit. That is the condition of the them sending me the kit. Um, so what it's looking like is Fizek has filed copyright claims for a lot of these open source projects. So I do have a contact at Fizet. Um, 
I don't know. He the guy who contacted me about this. So yesterday I messaged him. Yo, dude, what the heck? Can you explain why you're doing this? Um, because some I've already gotten DMs from people saying I should abandon this build altogether by now. People have messaged me about it. I'm not jumping to conclusions. It's one image and one tweet. I'm not doing a whole, you know, direction change based off that. So it's one-sided. Hey, what's going on? Now there's a 12 hour window. I've only got one reply. I've asked them more questions. I'm waiting on response from those questions. But what they have said is essentially the way copyright laws and whatnot, for those that don't know, in China are a lot different than North America. Over there, it's basically whoever files it first gets it. Um, it's not like here where, you know, if somebody were to try uh, trademark Voron right now, the team could get together and go, hey, we've been using this as our name since 2016. We have prior art, prior use, we're an established thing, and we could get that overturned very easily. Um, not over there. Over there, basically, from what I understand, you have to be either a company in China or a Chinese national to do this to be even begin with, so we can't even do anything. Um, and it's first come, first serve. So what's happening is they're not the only ones doing this. Um, basically, anything open source over there, somebody will try and trademark it and then extort either a fee or prevent others from using that name. Somebody already has Voron trademarked in China. Um, and apparently they've been using that to get fees out of companies on AliExpress who want to use the name Voron or use the logo. This is completely out of our hands. We can't do anything about it. This has been going on. So apparently it's kind of like a Cold War mutually assured destruction thing going on over there where everyone just tries to trademark everything as soon as they can so that nobody else does it first and beats them to the punch and then uses it against them. So they sent me a list of a bunch of different names. Now, unfortunately, I don't know any of the company names because what we know as the company name um, isn't what the company is registered as, you know. XYZ Motors, it's not XYZ Motors. It's Shenzhen Happy Go Lucky Manufacturing Limited, whatever. So they're all Chinese names in Chinese. I don't know any of the company names, but Fizet isn't the only company doing this. Uh, there are multiple companies and a lot of them are getting denied, it looks like. So it looks like a lot of these are getting denied. So I'm responded with several questions. I'm gonna wait till I get responses to those questions. So right now, I'm gonna carry on, okay? there's. Too much I don't know. I'm not going to jump to any conclusions. They're not the only ones doing this. Um, now, there is one company that is doing this, but they asked us first. And this was in response to the original company trying to copyright Voron and then being kind of dicks about it. So they came to us to see if they could do anything about it on our behalf. And since we liked them, we said, sure. But there are many companies doing this. And apparently this is a thing they do over there. So, <sighs> yay, drama. Now. Does this affect me or you? No, I'm not in China. No, Voron isn't a commercial company. We don't make Voron design compared. Contrary to what many people think, Voron doesn't make any money off of Voron. We are the worst company ever. Um, heck, back in the days of when we were developing the Taco Raven, uh, for those that don't know, we developed a controller board. Uh, the plan was once we got a model that kind of worked, we were just going to email the plans and Gerbers to every company that makes boards, Big Tree Tech, Fizek, every every company that makes boards. They'd be like, hey, somebody make this because we don't want to make it and we'll just buy it off you. Um, we're very bad when it comes to being a company because we're not a company. So does this affect me or you? No, this, this doesn't affect us at all. You can, you know, this will affect companies trying to make and sell kits on AliExpress, for example, but it doesn't affect anyone outside of China other than purchasing. And they can, of course, just call it, you know, the the Narav or the, the Verin or whatever the heck they want to call it, right? Because, you know, copyright laws in China are fun. So it's drama. I hate drama. I am going to continue on the build until I hear something else. Regardless of the outcome, I did agree to build this printer. Um, I may not name the company as much, but I am going to continue with this build and give it a review because that's what I agreed to do. Um, if I agree to do something, especially something like this, where, you know, you've sent me a product, I'm going to review it. And I said I would review it. I am going to review it. Now, when it comes to the review, if there are things I need to make comments on and critiques on, obviously I will make them then. But I know a lot of people will get educational information out of building this kit as just a Voron tried it. 
So I'm gonna continue with that and I'm gonna finish the build. So, uh, what drama have I missed? Uh, go back about five minutes and catch up. Oh. So. Uh, maybe they're trying to prevent business. That's pretty much what it looks like. From what it looks like, if they don't, what they're saying is if they don't do it, somebody else will do it and then try and claim them. So it's basically like mutually assured destructions. If you have nukes, I need nukes to prevent you from using your nukes. I want to sell Voron kits, but you are trying to trademark Voron names and other open source names. So I'm going to trademark the names before you could trademark the names and then use them against me. I hate drama. I hate this kind of crap. So we're just going to build printers. So let's carry on. How much kilograms of ABS do I need to print parts for Voron? Um, if you're buying spools, buy two spools of main color, one spool of accent color. You will have extra, but that should be enough, especially if you have to reprint anything. So, 22, time to pop in the whiskey open. Uh, it's too early for whiskey. It's 212. I got, I got, I got some G fuel. We're rocking the uh, the G fuel today. Because um, hardcore streamer, right? So where were we at? Where were we at? Um, we are building a trident. That's right. We are building a trident. So where we left off was here on page intentionally left blank. So we are moving on to the Z. Pour a glass of red. Ooh, ooh, I could go for some wine right now. Okay. Heat set time. Let's get the heat sets out. Um, do I have an extension cable in here? I'm going to have to plug it in under here. Ugh. I need more plugs. I need more plugs. I do not have enough plugs in this house. In this room. <clears throat> and what do we need? We need generic cable chain and IGIS. Which one did I print? Uh, probably generic. I'm assuming generic. Never have enough plugs. I, I need to get more. I need to buy one of those uh, strips of plugs. Uh, oh, and I missed one. Uh, Skyblock, uh, 499. Thank you. Appreciate it. What have you done so far? This. I did what I did on the previous stream. Uh, I wouldn't have enough plugs if you had a substation in this room because I'd use them all up. What I'm actually starting to get concerned about is uh, the amperage rating. Um... The other day, I the most I've had in terms of running, I've had V226 running, Tallboy running, Toasty running, a resin printer running, and these two were on, and the computer, and they're all on the same circuit. So it's, an, it's just a residential 15 amp. So there are times when I get a little worried about how much current I'm drawing in this room. Uh, B-roll, 10 Canadian, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, what do you think about the new Pico board? Um, actually, I, yeah, it's upstairs. I just got one. I just got an SKR Pico. Um, it's actually upstairs in my kitchen because I unboxed it before lunch and then I came down here and I forgot it sitting on my stove. So I do have one. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but it's neat. I like little compact boards for little compact printers. So. Uh, run a 14.3 or 23. Um, the problem is my basement is finished. Now, my basement was finished by the previous owner of this house. They did not do a great job, okay? So, I, I think the wiring in this room is shared with the laundry room. Like, nothing down here was actually run separately on my breaker, which is in the garage. So, running new lines into this basement would be a, um, it would be a pain. It'd be a major pain. So... I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. Okay, so we got some heat sets. Put those in. And now we need some T-nuts. Oh, no, turn on. There we go. Forgot my power uh, went off last night. Or... Uh, Backup recordings regularly. Okay. I'll make sure to do that.
Uh, is it still, the high pitch still pretty annoying? Let me see what I can do. Ah. See, I can't really do much because that's rubbing on the belt. Let me turn on the other noise canceling. Uh, or I'll just drop the fan down more. There we go. Okay, we're running at a 57% fan. And... Where do I get the music? Uh, it is Spotify. I'm using Spotify, but it is uh, Stream Beats. It's uh, music made for streaming, so we don't get DMCA'd. Because DN DMCA sucks. Because it's my money, damn it. Sony BMG does not need more money. Okay. And then we got the big piece, which is right here. And then that is held on with M510s. Can I put a different fan on it, like a separate wall plug fan, or just put it outside? The printer is attached to a rep box on the wall. There's really not much I can do. Let me try a different... Uh... Okay. I put on a, a, a different filter for uh, noise canceling. Let me know how uh, how that is. Because there's different, OBS has different uh, filters for noise canceling. So I put in one that, uh, usually I run a minor one because it doesn't affect it that much. But it, I think it distorts my voice a bit. So normally I don't run it, but uh, I don't hear it anymore. It sounds better. Okay, so we'll, we'll leave it at that and I'll put my fan back up a bit. There we go. A separate fan? Well, yeah, I could always put a desk fan on it, but that won't be the uh, the same. <laughs> That's just a desk fan. Come on. It, it... Have we ever had a stream where we didn't have something be scuffed? Like, it's not like, you know, I actually have production qualities and, you know... This is only stream number 99. It's not like, you know, I've been doing this for a while. Is it actually, yeah, we, we went through this last time. It, this is stream 99, I think. All good now? There we go. Okay, I'll just leave this uh, noise canceling filter on. Hi from Germany. Hello. Oh, uh, Alan Gusick, five euro. Thank you, appreciate it. Because of you, I have a switch wire. I am more than happy. Awesome. That's good to hear. Love your streams. Awesome. I am happy you have a switch wire. Hope you enjoyed the build. Hope the printer's working out great. Tread it verse 2.4. Um, doesn't matter. They both have the exact same gantry and they'll both have the exact same print quality um, if you take the time to tune them, okay? There's no real performance difference between the two. You get a bit of, you get a little bit more capability in the Z with a V2 um, because on a on a Trident you are limited to integrated lead screws, okay? Because it's designed around integrated lead screw Dimas. So this is a 350 on the XY. This is only 250 on the Z um, because these only come in certain sizes. So a V2 scales better on the Z. In terms of XY, it doesn't really matter. The gantry on both is the same. So it's really, do you want a little bit simpler and cheaper of a build in three-point leveling? Or do you want to go all fancy with the uh, 
the flying gantry. Flying gantry, you get a lower center of gravity, so you should be able to run a little bit harder because you're going to have lower center of gravity, lower moving mass. It's not going to shake as much compared to a tall trident where all your weight's up here and it's going to move, you know, physics. Um, but also the gantry on here is fixed to the frame versus on here where it's riding on rails. It There's trade-offs. Build which one you like. Okay, so now I got to put some... Go. So let's grease, grease these guys up. Upside down printer. Yeah, you can build it upside down if you want. Have fun. So I did flush all these. So none of these are actually like clean clean but what i did was most rails for those that don't know and i think i went over this last week but your rails do not come oiled okay they come with a rust preventative oil on it it's not a lubrication oil so you need to oil or grease personally i prefer grease um i've been lazy lately and i just use spray on uh white lithium grease out of this you know can um apparently ptfe is better but i don't have any so I just spray some white lithium, move it around, and that way it gets in that little nook and cranny and actually gets on the bearings. Do not just put grease on the rails and move the carriage around because the wipers will prevent the grease from getting on the bearings. Now, if you have rails that actually have the grease port in them, use the grease port. But most of the cheap rails that you'll find on AliExpress or through resellers do not have that grease port. They might have a hole there, but it might it's probably not a grease port, especially on MGN 9s. And then also, um, my replacement dragon showed up. Maz, thank you for coming a member. Uh what's that? This is not always true, Misumi. If you have the money to spend on Misumi rails, um, power to you, man. On a 3D printer, personally, I think you are better spent spending your money on other things. Um, but if you if you are okay dropping the coin on Misumi rails, which I think are THK, I think Misumi sells THK rails. Misumi is a store. You gotta remember that Misumi is a store. They're not a comp They're not a manufacturer. Even their their extrusions, I. Don't think they make them in house, or if they do, that's like the only thing they make in house, because most of the other stuff they're just a, a reseller. And then I actually leave my rails wet. I like leaving my rails wet because if your rails are bone dry, they'll rust, and rusty rails isn't fun. So leave your rails a little wet. So we are going to put our Z one on first, or our rear Z. They're all Z. Got a little bit of grease on the frame. That's okay. It'll prevent the aluminum from rusting. Uh, ever have wet ABS cause a clog in the heat break? Um, I haven't had a clog or jam in like months so yeah remember for 13 months holy shit how many do i need two three oh, one two three four five six seven eight one two three six seven eight And remember, you just need it for every other. Uh, why Trident? Why rename for 1.8? Uh, because people are getting very confused on the naming. <laughs> um, so the Voron names is the 
it's kind of like think of it like bmw names you you have you know the three series the fourth series the five series etc however many they have now right so the voron name the v2 is the name of the printer it's not version 2 it's just voron 2 that's the name of the printer um so people kept getting very confused over the naming um for example people just assume the v1 is outdated when in reality the trident's now the newest which trident was v1.9 working name before we renamed it is the newest v2.4 is actually the oldest current voron um so to make things easier instead of confusing people with number names they actually are going forward having name names that started with like the switch wire and the legacy So just to make things a little bit easier. You installed four because that's what the picture showed. Ooh. Does it say put every other? Uh, it might further up, but yeah, it's for the rails you put every other. head in here so you can see the uh, back of my head right now what name we come up with v2 it'll be v22 it'll be new v2 The thing is, I think like V0 will always be V0 because the, the name kind of works because it's small. Uh, 3DS naming scheme. <laughs> Part of me is still kind of peeved they don't use the name Game Boy anymore. Voron Mini. No, that's too much of a trope. Think back. How how many printers back in the day were Mini or Micro or something? Like, that, that name is co too commonly used. Okay. So, insert the T-nuts as shown. Cool. And the rail goes right against the bottom. Leave a small gap between the printed part. One to two millimeters is fine. Okay. I can do that. down I go finger tight with all of them and then I go through and twerk them all Eric Jansen five euro thank you appreciate it thanks for these streams and videos very informative it'll always fun to watch cheers from the Netherlands cheers what time is it over there right now because I I'm pretty sure I'm GMT minus is it minus five or plus five I, I know England's like five hours ahead of me so Netherlands is what seven 8.30. Oh, 6. Okay. See, that's one of those little tricks you do to get engagement on YouTube. You just ask what time it is, and everyone tells me what time it is in their time zone. And then we have a little stop up top. 
that our rail doesn't go flying. Because that would suck. So it's an M3 and a hammerhead. So, speaking of this, um... I was kind of playing with the idea. I was I was looking because you know, I build too many Vorons apparently. So I, I'm looking at other printer kits. Um, so I, I'm looking at other printer kits that you know might be a fun little thing to build. And I'm not going to say the kit, but put stops on your rails. <laughs> Like, I, I, I know you can, you know, oh, when it's assembled, the carriage can't fly off because it's held on by XYZ. But still, if you have the opportunity to put a stop on the end of your rail so that your carriage doesn't go flying off when you're doing maintenance or whatever and it's not fully assembled, put a stop on the end of your rail. I'm not going to say what printer that is, but I've seen the design and I'm like... Why don't you guys have a stop there? You can easily have a stop there. That's just, you know, a little bit of uh, quality of life. Uh, yeah, it was a V minion. I just, I looked at that and I'm like, why? You see now, now I can take the little stoppers out, put them aside because I don't need them anymore. And this thing ain't going anywhere. You know, because, oh, hey, I'm building it. I don't have the belt in, and I flipped it over. Oh, it's gone. I got to reball everything. Hi, Nitram. Okay, so now we are putting on our front uh, thingies. Let's get some tea nuts. I don't need M3s, I need M5s. The thing is, if I built another printer, um, one, I want it to be a smaller size because um, I don't have enough room for big printers right now. And two, I I don't want it to just be a generic Core XY because I, I have enough Core XYs. Oh wait, no, these go on the top. What am I doing? These go on the top. So. A Prusa Mini. Um, actually, I wouldn't mind a Prusa Mini. That, that probably would be a fun little build. It's just kind of... I wouldn't say hard to justify, but it's a little hard to justify going out and buying a person league. Like. 160 watching and 40 likes. Actually, it's worse than that. According to YouTube, I got 340 people watching right now. And uh, 80 likes, so somebody's data's a bit behind. But still, that's like 260 of you guys not, you know, liking that smash button. Got to help the metrics out, guys. Got to help the metrics out. Because apparently that's, you know, I'm supposed to say ring the bell to... What else am I supposed to say? Ring the bell, uh, like, comment, subscribe... Um, check out the merch store. Uh, follow me on, uh, in I don't have Instagram. Yeah, I don't have Instagram. I got a Facebook. But I use that for sharing, like, family photos, and that's about it. I think the last time I posted on there was, like, a year ago. Um, I got Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, at 3DP Nero. I post stuff there occasionally. Uh, let's see. Oh, hold on a second here. There's a printer on thingy that is purpose-built for my Kia Calyx. I don't have an Ikea nearby. 
A uh, bear upgrade of a Mark III, that'd be kind of cool. But I'd have to get a Mark III. Buy the LTT water bottle. No, man, don't. I'm, I'm all on the G Fuel now, right? I got the G Fuel. I'm a streamer. I got G Fuel. Code Wubby. Get yourself some G Fuel. Yeah. Uh, just build a bear from scratch. I know, I got... Remember, I got a V0 in a box on the floor right now I still need to build. And then apparently a Micron at some point. A uh, solution for bed mounts like the Rat Rig. Okay, so Jeff, the problem with that is, um, you know, the Rat Rig with their custom uh, ball mount or whatever the heck it is. The problem is, that is custom. Okay? One of the design ethos of Voron Design is no custom components. Everything on a Voron needs to be commercially available worldwide without having to go through anything custom. That is part of the design goals of the Voron, is no custom components. So because of that, we are limited to what we can do. That is always has been a design thing. And that is something we're not going to be changing anytime soon. We're not going to be requiring you to buy custom components at any point. So that's why we have, uh, and we'll get to it, where we use the, uh, the the spherical bearings at some point. Can you buy the Nero 3D build plate? Um, these are from Fabrico. Fabrico made these for me custom. Um, if you hit them up, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'll get a store at some point and sell them. We'll see. Uh, is there a way to grease V0 rails once they are already on? Uh, disassemble. Uh, you may be able to get in there with, like, some spray-on stuff like this and kind of weasel your way in there, maybe. But it, it's going to be a little tricky. What is custom? Like, all the printed parts? LOLOL. Okay, when you when you end a statement with LOLOL, it just, just comes across like a trolley douche. So please don't do that. Um... No, don't think I have like some kinematic mount or whatever. Which, by the way, uh, these printers are self-built. If you want to use the the whatever system Railcore uses, you can do that. You know, ending statements like that just comes across. It's like anytime I mention Windows, and then the Linux guys go, <laughs> "Wind blows." It you automatically like make me stop wanting to try Linux for like another ten years. Uh, energetic will put your logo on stuff um these beds are a lot better than the energetic ones i'm running these i literally ripped off all my energetic beds the moment i use these once on here all my other energetic beds are now just sitting on a shelf because these are so much better no custom parts with things custom well it's 3d printed that's that's kind of the thing it's 3d printed so obviously the printed parts are going to be custom because they're printed, but you can print them yourself. I'm talking about components that you need to purchase. And yes, being the, oh, I'm technically correct. The best kind of correct is, yeah, no. Okay, so we got that. Would I put a stealth burner on the machines? Uh, so right now I'm running three stealth burners. Uh, V0, uh, the V2, and Tallboy all have stealth burners. I am building this one stock at first. I am building this using all the components that come with the kit and building it stock to the manual first. And then I will convert it to a um, stealth burner and do all the upgrades as the clockwork too and all that later. So I'm building it stock first. I would say I have a rat rig. Okay. I got no problems with rat rigs. They, there are some design choices I'm not a huge fan of. And apparently some people have had issues with the kits because of they got swamped. But I've got nothing against rat rigs. Like, somebody on the team recently bought a minion kit just to play around with. So, I got, I got nothing against rat rigs. 
Uh, if you're thinking about getting a Mini Plus, why not go with the Rat Rig Mini? Because once you factor in shipping and exchange, it's $800 Canadian. When I can get a Prusa Mini for $600 Canadian. And that's an assembled Prusa Mini. At least I think it's assembled. I, I didn't read the kit. Yeah. So yeah, 800 Canadian for a Rat Rig Minion. And the funny thing is, I actually have most of the stuff here to build one myself. Like, I have a whole bunch of 30-30. I have a whole switch wire kit collecting dust in there that I could probably... Um, or switch wire frame. So I could probably self-source one, actually. Relatively easily. So I, if I do that, I'd probably self-source one. I do like the design, though. I do like that simplistic style of small printer. I, I will say, I am just looking at the, the, the quick looking at the design of the Rat Rig Minion. I think it's a cool design. I like minimalistic small printers. So... Uh, having some fun. Yeah. I'm Nis. Five dollars. Thank you. Appreciate it. Having some... Yeah. English. Having fun so far. Thanks for what you're doing as always. Cheers. Uh, if you say no custom parts and the whole thing is custom plastic, sounds like you know, like the know-it-alls from the Facebook group. Ah, the Facebook group. The Voron Facebook group. That is a, uh... That is a place on the internet. Is the Stealth LCLs out? Um, if you go on the Voron Discord, there's a beta channel for it. There are beta files out and available if you want to play around with the beta version. Um, be aware, if you're playing around with the beta version, everything is subject to change. So if you print it out and then two minutes later, the parts are outdated, welcome to beta life. Because I think we were up to revision in the mid-20s before we even started the beta. So, a lot of tweaks. Uh, Trident has been a more recent manual with lessons learned. Yeah, the Trident manual is uh, newer. The V2 manual is currently getting updated. There is currently V2.4 R2 in the works. Um, and that has um, pretty much design work is done on it. But we're not releasing that until the manual is done. Because the manual needs to go along with it. And that is going to have all the, the new updates and whatnot. Because right now, the 2.4 manual is the oldest Voron manual. And it's from a time before Voron was really popular. And we had a lot of newbies building printers. So it took a lot of liberties in assuming you kind of knew how to do certain things. Because Voron was a lot more niche at the time. And it was mostly being built by people who had built 3D printers before. So everyone kind of knew what they were doing. And now we have a lot of newbies, which I'm not saying that's bad. Um, but we do have a lot of new people building. So the, the manual is a lot more in depth with certain things than the previous manuals. Or the, the old manual. Okay, get my spacers out. Uh, did you resin print the stealth burner LED diffuser? I don't have any LEDs in any of my stealth burners yet. Um, simply because I don't have the LEDs yet. They're on their way from China. Because I am not paying the Canadian markup on out of fruit ones. It's ridiculous. So for those that don't know, I'm putting rails on. Um, I got the little front motor mounts on and now I'm just mounting the rails and I don't know. You've seen me mount rails. Uh, the build sheets, uh, they are for Brico. Yeah, the Minion is so simplified. I honestly love simplified printers. I love super simple, like, small printers. They're just interesting.
One day I'll actually design my own printer. You know, you, you think being on the Voron team for like... Over three years? Oh my god, over three years now. Um, yeah. Early 2018. Ooh. Um... That I, I, I would have contributed more to design work by now, um, other than doing the standalone jetpack. <laughs> that's that's my one thing I've really contributed. The standalone jetpack that nobody uses. Standalone variant of the jetpack. So. Almost four years now. I know. Back in my day. Yeah, because I, uh, I ordered the frame for my V2 um, when my wife was in labor at the hospital. <laughs> and we're just putting a little stop up top there. So my rail carriage, don't go flying. Get the little stoppers out. That's yes, good. And now we do the other one, I think. So we got the stopper up there. We put the other side on. I've already put this one on. And then we put the rails on. Oh, wait. Did I screw up? Are the rails on the inside? Yeah, the rails are on that side. Yeah, I, okay. Yeah, I did the right one. Yeah. Rails are on the inside. Uh, the manual. Yeah, Dunar. Dunar does most of the manuals, and, uh, he is the manual guy, because he is good at them. Because, uh, let's be honest, if it was, if I was in charge of manuals, it'd just be like, go watch my videos. First page, see video. And then it would be a really bad MS Paint drawing after that. By the way, um, so I am working on two reviews right now. Hopefully, I'm hoping the Urkfa review is next week. Um, I should be able to film it later this week. I, I think I'll be have enough footage and enough hours on it to do a video. Um, my Revo review is not going to be like a normal review. I'm like not even going to show a print on it, I don't think. Because honestly, at this point, reviewing a hot end and just showing off pictures of prints, I think is uh, pointless. Because let's be honest, we're at the point now, any good printer hardware prints good as long as you take the time to tune. And my printer prints different than your printer. So the hot end in my printer, the hot end in this printer prints differently than the hot end in this printer. So if I'm showing you prints off this printer with this hot end, it, it doesn't make mean anything. So I'm just going to be talking about it. Going over things I like, things I don't like, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, Steve's here. Hi, Steve. Everyone say hi, Steve. Steve Builds. If you don't follow him on the YouTubes, follow him on the YouTubes. Do this now. Is there anything people don't like? Um, a lot of people are kind of up in a tiff about the fact that it uses, you know, a new hot end design. Or, correction, a new nozzle design. But the fact you never have to worry about ooze issues ever again. Um... I, I can dig it. I, I'm okay with that. And the, the quick change is actually really nice. Because, uh... I don't know if it works on PLA. I still need to test it. But on this guy right here, my ending script 
for when I finish a print uh, is a five millimeter retract. So I finish my prints with a five millimeter retract and that actually pulls enough filament out of the nozzle that while the printer is cold, um, I can take the nozzle out. So what that means is even like right now, if you want it to, even on like say uh, a dragon or a mosquito or even any current quick change nozzle where you, you don't need a tool, right? You can just undo it. You still need to heat up the hot end to take the nozzle out most of the time. Um, on this one, Um, this printed something earlier. Um, I, I just unscrew it. And then I'm going to print some skirts later. And I want to print those skirts uh, with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. So I'm going to get my 0.8 nozzle and uh, put that in. And we're good to go. And there we go. Now I got a 0.8 nozzle loaded in it and I can print some stuff. Like it, it's, it, just being able to do that saves so much time. Cause now I don't need to wait for it to heat up. And then all I do is I just run a really big purge line at the beginning of my prints. Um, and that just gets the filament good. And then I do a, uh, a not a skirt, uh, or is it a skirt? I do a skirt. And usually the skirt is long enough to do, to flush out the old filament and get the new one flowing. Do I, yeah, I do run a, a five millimeter retract at the end of my prints. So at the end of my print, my G code does a five millimeter retract. And then I do a pretty good healthy purge at the beginning. And so even if I don't swap the nozzle, um, it's still flowing fine by the time the print starts, even without the skirt. Is the stealth burner compatible? It's compatible with anything that a V6 runs in. Like um, this is running excuse the wiring but this is the the heart k board and the heater plugs directly into it and then the thermistor i had to make this stupid like two centimeter extension on it which i could have soldered a, an extension on the wires but i didn't want to actually cut or crimp the wires i i, I didn't want to modify the existing wires that come out because they come pre-fitted with connectors and whatnot and i'm probably gonna have to pull it out for the review video so i didn't want to fiddle with the wires because i want it to look new for the video Those are good. Put our little slide stop up top so we don't lose our... CHT and Revo are different. No yeah, the Revo is not a high flow nozzle, but it prints like everything I printed on this for this printer, uh, minus a few parts. The accents were printed on uh, Toasty. I printed the accents on Toasty. Uh, but all the orange parts on here... Um, like, these are all printed on a Revo. And, I don't know. Looks pretty good. And it runs my normal, like, my normal production speeds that I, I run on all my printers for ABS and AESA parts and whatnot. It runs it just fine. Um, my infill is the most demanding part and I run a a 0.72 millimeter flow with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle at 120 millimeters a second uh, with 0.2 layer height and it it doesn't claw it doesn't die on that it handles it just fine so okay so 
We've got our mounts mounted. We got our rails mounted. We got our slide stop in. And now we need to put this guy together. So let's put this guy up. And dig some parts in. So we are need the left Z joint. Which that's the right. Left side joint, okay, and then the top part. Which is that. Okay, so we need an M5 nut. Everything off the shelf, so. five nut in there Put that on and then it's m36 where are the m36 m36 oh they're a little baggy here Uh, PCB is not required. Yeah, no. You don't need PCB tool head boards on any boron. They're, though, PCB tool head boards are a custom thing. And you can, while well, you can do them, you, you're not required to. Okay, so now I am putting on this little accent piece. Right, pretty sure this is just for appearance. Uh, let's see if the wow stick has enough oomph for this. Probably not. Nope. <laughs> go, go, wow stick. Dies. Torque? What is torque? There we go. These thread into plastic. Anytime they thread into plastic, don't over tighten them. Basically just go till they bottom out and call it a day. Because this, uh, pretty sure this piece is just cosmetic. Potosi, thank you for coming to member. Okay, and then I need to take the lead screw nut off. Actually, one second. I want to check because, uh, shoot, was it? I don't know if this kit comes with uh, different lead screw nuts. I, I can't remember. Um, I, I remember seeing something in the kit when we were unboxing it. And I don't know if I'm crazy or if they are What layer height? I'm probably just going to do like 0.3 layer height. Like it's just cosmetic. I, I like the look of layer lines. I, I Some people hate them, but I like the look of layer lines. So 
I might do them chunky just to have them chunky. Okay, maybe I was seeing something. Yeah. Home tape. Those are the chains. Yeah, maybe I was seeing something. I could have sworn I saw a backlash nut in one of these boxes. Yeah. It's a spider. Yeah, pretty sure I saw backlash on, but I think I might have been seeing something then. Uh, where's the doggo? Um, he's upstairs. Um, I think my wife is out back with the little guy. So he might be... Oh, yeah. No, they did give me palm. Okay. So I do have palm nuts. So I think the dog's outside, actually. Yeah, there we go. So I do have... It does come with palm uh, nuts. But I don't need to unscrew all these just yet. Some kit providers. Go on the Voron Discord. Uh, there's channels for a bunch of different countries. And... Uh, or for a bunch of different vendors. And look up... Okay, and that is M312. And then some lock nuts. And it says put two in and don't over tighten. Okay. But yeah, check uh, on the Discord. Now, shoot. Um, yeah, that goes like that. Yeah, that's got to go like that. No. Wait, am I looking at this? Yeah, the nuts are on that side, yeah. I'm changing the palm nuts. Yeah, I'm using the palm nuts. This kit comes with upgraded palm nuts, so I'm going to use them. And they have anti-backlash as well, so. We will be rolling with what the kit comes with. Yeah, palm nuts, you don't need grease on the rods. And it says, don't fully tighten. Uh, for best results, do not tighten fully. Okay. So we're just going to go to a kind of bottom out a bit and then just kind of back off just a hair. 
But I guess that way it's in case they, uh... They need to find a home? Yeah, because they're, they're not going to be perfectly centered, right? Got the one. And now we do the other one. Okay. Fifty millimeter second speed and three hundred millimeter cube a second too much excel. No. Oh, geez, I run three hundred travels on pretty much all my printers. Don't want a dog hair in the printer. Well, let's be honest. I'm going to get dog hair in here anyways at some point. So it's going to happen. But while we're building it, let's try not to get dog hair between the parts. Uh, which electric screwdriver? I use an ES... I have two. I use the ES-126 more. Um, it's got more torque. It's enough to pretty much tighten an M3 screw pretty much good. Um, I keep a WoW stick on hand, though, for, like, the smaller button heads and whatnot. Um, it's not... Uh, it doesn't have anywhere near as much torque as the ES-126. And by the way, I finally charged this thing. The last time I charged it was before the, uh, the V0 stream, when we built a V0 in a day. I haven't charged it since then. There we go. So we've got two of these made and I need another M5 for that. Uh, my first four on V01 LDO kit. Build is finished. Congrats, Stefan. How much lead? Um, I don't know. I I think they're eight four, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Jeff, I'm using the stock Trident files. Uh, 
Okay, and now we are building the back one. So, back one, an M5 nut again, which is probably gonna fall out. And then another in your hole. There we go. Actually, shoot. Is... Ah, put them together backwards. The spring is supposed to go on top of them. Am, am I right on that? Is the spring supposed to go on top? How much room do I have? Yeah, so the spring's supposed to be on top, right? Not on the bottom. Yeah, because right now I have the spring on the bottom. Shoot. And I think I gotta flip all these. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think I gotta flip these. Oh, spring on top? Yeah, so I gotta flip these. Shiza. That ain't good. Oh well. Easy fix. Easy fix. That's okay. We all screw up. Bobody's nerfic. That's okay. That's okay. We don't recommend the ABL parts, or... Uh, Ludwig, I've already talked about that at the beginning of the stream. There's a little bit more to it than that, but we're, uh... I've already talked, covered it at the beginning of the stream. Um... Do we don't recommend ABL nuts on those at all? Does it even fit the part? Um, are you talking about the springs, Steve? Like, uh, because it comes with the palm little springy preloady things. Because what I might do then is I might just leave the nut without the spring if I should be using the spring at all. But let's be honest, the weight of the bed is going to get rid of any preload or any uh, play. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to leave the palm. I'm going to use the palm, but I'm not going to put the anti-backlash in. Okay, so I'll use the palm part, but I won't put the anti-backlash part in with the springs and whatnot. Does the Trident need a bed probe like a BL Touch? It has a bed probe. It uses an inductive probe. It doesn't use a BL Touch. No Vorons use BL Touches except for a few mods from people who are crazy. Yeah, it fits. Yeah, it fits. By the way, yesterday, I did something for the first time. 
yesterday, I went to Chick-fil-A. That was the first time I've ever been to a Chick-fil-A. It was yesterday. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. So. Now we got that part put together. Don't fully tighten. Okay, okay. And now we're attaching them, it looks like. This M312s. Sounds snobby. I don't know. It was good. I've never been to a Chick-fil-A. They just, like, there's only a couple in Canada, and they just opened one up. Well, they, they opened it up in town a while ago, but it's been uh, stupid busy. But yesterday, I had the week off work. It was a random Tuesday, and we went. It was good. Now we're attaching these. Are you sure this is M312s? Oh, unless the back ones aren't. The back ones are probably different. Let's do these ones first. Let's do the ones the manual says to do first. These M5 nuts keep falling out. So it says M312. See, there's no point in having an overhead cam there because the frame is straight and it blocks everything. Jason! Hey, Jason. Uh, War on Kit will be next week. What? What? Uh, LDO 2.4 Kit released soon after New Year, most likely next week. Jeez, I gotta build this one quick then. That is a build I'm looking forward to. Because, let's be honest, a lot of people use my streams to help them build their printers. And my uh, V2 builds, uh, streams, are kind of archaic at this point. Um, you can count the pixels. Again, stay in your hole. That's what she said. Okay. Uh, I'm suddenly hungry for Chick fil A. It was good. I got a spicy chicken sandwich. Um, I don't know. It was good. You know, better than like a KFC chicken sandwich, that's for sure. But let's be honest I've made homemade chicken, fried chicken sandwiches that were better. And that's the problem with most, like, restaurants and fast food. It's like, you know, I've never had a steak at a restaurant better than a steak I've cooked myself. Uh, LDO, uh, well, who is that? Uh, Zap, Bar, Zarp, JJ. Uh, LDO doesn't sell directly, only through resellers. So, like, printed solid in the U.S., Sparta 3D in Canada, etc. Where is Doggo? I think he's upstairs with the wife. I think the little guy's outside, so they're all outside. So.
Uh, who is that? Michael, thank you for coming a member. Okay, let me see if the dog's outside. Nope. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're they're out back or they're some they're gone for a walk. My wife said she was gonna go out when I was down here, so I'm assuming they're all downstairs or something, or up outside or something, because normally he's, uh, oh, I put these on backwards. Oops. See, you got me talking and I start putting stuff together backwards. This backwards day? It is. It's one of those days. It's just one of those days. That's okay. That's okay. You guys are asking about the dog. I'm worried about the dog. Can't find the dog. Steve B, thank you for coming a member. And Chris, thank you for coming a member. Focus. Focus? Focus on what? Uh, Steve, you can't post links. It won't let you. I have that, uh, disabled because people are bad. Same with bots. Bots are bad. Makes a little bit more sense. Uh, would you rather build a 2.4 or tried it? Well, I built many 2.4s. This is the first Trident I'm building. Um, I get this all the time. People are asking, which one should I build, Trident or 2.4? They both perform pretty much exactly the same. The Trident doesn't scale as well on the Z. You are limited in the Z more on a Trident versus a, uh, a V2. Um, Trident's a bit cheaper though. Um, isn't as isn't as complicated as a build apparently. Um, less parts to it. But at the end of the day, it's personal preference. They both perform pretty much the same. That a stealth burner. Which one? There, there, or there. Yes. Okay. Now we put the back one on. These are M38s. DC Sublime, $20. Thank you. Appreciate it. Happy New Year to all. Happy New Year to you too. The orange one. Yes, that has a uh that has a uh, that has a stealth burner and and a Revo. Look at the Revo go. Um, by the way, Revo. Um, for those that have enraged rabbit carrot feeders or multi material units, you know how you got to get that. Um, when you do the retracts, you got to get the bulb really clean on the filament. The Revo, perfect. Like literally no tuning. It, it's like bang on perfect right out of the box. Um, it is so clean when it comes to those retract bulbs. It's it's insane. Like no stringing at all. Uh, 
Am um, I doing multi material? Yeah, I'm doing a multi. I'm doing a little uh, Aztec tiki guy because I I bender failed. Uh, if you're not following me on Twitter at 3DP Nero, um, I was printing a bender the other day and I haven't had a chance to try printing them again. But one of my settings was off a bit. Um, the sensor to nozzle was off. Um, I had to change it. I, I didn't change it after putting in the, uh, the Revo and it was a little bit different. And what happened was, is during the uh, purge block, it built up a blob and it caused Bender, right, there it is, to uh, go on a Bender. So this part of the print was coming out great. And then Bender went on a Bender <laughs> and started uh, going in places I didn't want him to go. I'm 40% layer shifted. And then I didn't know what happened. I woke up and the print had failed. So I didn't know what happened. So I started it again. And unfortunately it takes like 10 hours to get to this point because of all the, uh, the changes. It takes a minute to do a filament swap on one of these, right? So by the time I got to the point it failed again, I saw what was happening and I knew it was going to happen and there was nothing I could do to stop it. So I, at that point, I just, you know, I, I haven't tried printing again because I got sick and whatnot in the holidays. Okay. So we've got our thingamabobbers on. And now we need to invert the printer. And at that point, when you flip it, that is the point you realize if you forgot to put any of the slide stops on. Uh, Revo Micro is preferred. Um, it does mount a little bit better than the Revo 6. It's a little bit uh, more firm, but that is a Revo 6 in there um, because a Revo 6 is dropping compatible anything running a, v a V6. Um, so that's a stealth burner with a V6 mount running a Revo 6. It's, it's fine. Hey, uh, it looks like we're putting motors in now. So flip it upside down, turn the printer upside down for the next assembly I step and apply things. lubrication. We are not gonna lube because they're palm and I can always lube them later, uh, and I'm not gonna get grease all over me. Dustin Speed, $10, thank you, appreciate it. Approve more Bender prints. I approve too. Okay, and uh, it looks like the little plug is inward, and it's M312's holding it in. So, Yeah, re basically, if you're buying a Revo, uh, buy Revo 6, the or buy a Micro. The only reason to really buy a Revo 6 is if your printer currently uses a, a, a V6 or V6 equivalent hot end, um, and you just want to drop in replacement. So if you're running like a Prusa uh, Mark III, and you just want to swap them right out, just get a, a Revo 6 and it swaps right out. Will the ERCFA work with the Zero One? Um, I'm going to cover that in my review, but basically for the ERCFA to work properly, you need to have a tool head sensor. You need an end stop in the tool head uh, below the extruder, but above the nozzle. Um, that way it detects when it's loaded properly, if there's jams and whatnot. Um, the problem is with the V0, there's no room in there, or there is none in there. And there's currently no mods or whatever to make it work. So at this time, you can make it work. There's a way to run it in Rage Rabbit Carrot Feeder without that tool head sensor, but you really want to be running it. So it's kind of like, you know, a car with three wheels. You, you really want that fourth wheel. Revo versus Rapido. Um, do you want to print high flow? If so, Rapido, because a Revo isn't a high flow nozzle. Uh, somebody working with the Earth for compatible a mini AB support with sensors, but it's in dev. Yeah, what you know, 
The thing is, too, remember, you need a purge block, right? Um, that is a downside with a multi-material setup like this. You you need a purge block. And the problem is, let's uh let's do a demonstration here because I have no. Oh my god, I got so much stuff here. Come on, yeah, man. Wait, what am I doing? I got a one down here. Okay. So here's your flex plate. There's your B0 bed, okay? Here is that frog that everyone prints that's multi-material. And here's the purge block. Okay. Now, no, that, that's a little frog. Let's let's print uh Patrick and the purge block. Like Here, let, let's print this uh, tiny outlet and the purge block. Like that, you ain't got much room. <laughs> you, you're, you're really gimping yourself. You're, you're really limiting yourself putting a multi-material on, uh, on a V0. And you can't justify it because so, somebody said, hey, I'm just, I just want to build a two unit one for, um, for filament changeover. So like when I run out of one spool, it'll change over to the other. If you're printing something that needs more than one spool of filament on a V0, you are amazing. <laughs> are you printing 120 millimeter solid cubes? So yeah, uh, a V0, you, you could make it work. It is, you know, possible, but you're not printing anything large or, you know, many colors because your purge block needs to be a certain size. There will always have to be a minimum amount of purge and as you add colors, you add another line, right? Like this is like, you know, this is a small purge block. That that owl, there was a lot of portions of the owl where it was printing like four colors on the, on the same layer. And these purge blocks get pretty big because you need to purge a certain amount. Now, with the king seat or whatever, like an, ind an independent purge thing where it just purges into a pellet. Um, yeah, you can get away with a bit more. But still, um, I wouldn't do multi-material on a printer that limited in terms of size. Because you're going to run into a lot of cases where you want to print something that might be a little big. And then you're, you you can't. Because anything over 120 millimeters cubed, you just can't print on it. Personally, um, any of the fixed gantry machines or switch wire is what I would put... Uh, the original plan, the original plan was actually the reason this is printed in generic Voron colors, just red and black and not the switch wire colors, is I was originally going to swap this onto here. I was going to put this on the Trident at some point. Um, now I might turn this into the um, uh, an IDEX. We'll see. Um, but the original plan was for that to uh, go on here. But now Eddie has his uh, Tridex or whatever it's called. Tridex is already a thing, so we can't call it Tridex, but whatever he decides to call it. Uh, MCU shut down at 70%. Ooh, what happened? Was it a bad check? Put a good USB cable. A lot of the time, if you're having uh, crashes, like MCU, sh or MCU shut down... Uh, overheat or it could be bad if... a lot of issues i've seen with people on flipper are bad cables get good usb cables guys will there be a mount with the revo micro to work with afterburner yes there will be a mount i believe there already is one uh because somebody in the beta was running one so there already is a mount i believe okay so same thing and the motor is, or the connector is facing inward And M312s. Running old Pi, no new ones to be found. Oof. Yeah, Pies are, uh, I'm not going to say who, but uh, a vendor I've spoken to recently is uh, tempted to sell kits with uh, Marlin on the SKRs because he can't find, because getting Pies are such a pain. Which I kind of understand. It sucks, but I kind of understand. Because like a V0 run Marlin just fine. Like, 
nowadays you can't i believe all all the borons you can't run on marlin because there are single board solutions now for everything because you used to not be able to do v2 on marlin because of the uh there wasn't a single board solution but now there are so yeah So these are, are just tight by the, uh, the screwdriver. They're not like tight, tight. So when I flip this, I gotta tighten them properly, but they're just kind of tight enough for now. There go. So the motors are in. Now what? Uh, we have to put together our feet. And these are what was printing on stream last week that I forgot to print. So I printed them on stream. By the way, I'm really digging this orange and white, this this uh, creamsicle color that we went with. Um, I think it was Sanity. Uh, she recommended that color. Was it her or somebody else? Um, it's her filament. It's their filament they sent me. I'm really digging it. That was a good idea. I'd rather use RepRap firmware. Yeah, I you know, a lot of Voron. There's guys on the, for those that you know. Oh, Voron's all Clipper. There's plenty of people on the Voron dev team still running RepRap. Um, yeah. Okay, so put the uh, the M36s and put the feetsies together. Okay. Are there different variants of these? There are. Okay. Yeah, it, well, it, th there used to be Marlin. Um, the original V2, Russian Cat Foods original V2.0, and uh, several of the original ones were running Marlin, but they were running a ramps with either a custom expander or another ramps. There is actually enough pins available on an Arduino uh, Mega to run seven stepper motors on a ramps. Um, so the original, you know, when RCF designed the original V2.0, his was running Marlin 1.8 <laughs> with a whole bunch of custom code on it. But you were limited literally to, you couldn't go faster than 100 millimeters a second with some pretty low excels. Like it, it was pretty limiting. But the alternative was a Duet plus Duex, which was pretty expensive at the time. Uh, John Clark, $20. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Mellow Gemini board has Pi built in plus MCU. Um, got a few days ago, runs Rep Rep Firmware Clipper, running it on Rep Rep Firmware SBC mode. The Magic Clipper would be the same. Um, I don't think it is running. Um, ah, I don't think it's actually running a Raspberry Pi MCU. I think it has some other MCU. I don't think it's a Raspberry Pi MCU. If I'm not. Uh, Ah, I want to get my hands on one. Got a few days ago, run RRS Clipper, running it on RRS in SBC mode. So it imagined Clipper would be the same. Uh, yeah, it's not a Pi. It's some other chip. It's running some custom stuff, which works, but eh, custom. It'd be like the equivalent. I think it's running like an orange Pi CPU, MCU. Um, with the amount of printers you got now, do you have any issues with prints not sticking? No. I, I run PI flex plates on my printers. On pretty much all of them except for uh, the commercial ones. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know. It works the same as the Pi Duet. Yeah, it's running. It, It's already installed, so you don't have to worry about it. But it, it from somebody who has one, uh, they told me it's it's pretty much running a Orange Pi. So, yes, it can run um, Octoprint uh, or Wrap or Clipper or whatever. But it's running... It, it doesn't have the same underlying um, operating system or something like that. So you might run into issues with updates in the future. That's from what I understand. But yeah, the only printers I have that don't run uh, flex plates are pretty much the commercial machines. They have what they come with. I don't have an LGX light yet. I do have one coming though. And we'll probably put that on a V0. You know what? I might I might pull out the old uh, V00 and do some updates on that at some point. We'll see. Or I might just put it on this guy right here. Yeah, I might, this guy, this poor guy has been collecting dust for a while, so I might put it on there. Um, yeah, this is a V00. We, we might put the Pico on there and some other stuff and have some fun. I gotta update, a, it's running a belted Z, I gotta update that because it's running an old version that's got some issues. Can I print my parts with ASA or ABS? Uh, they both are fine, both perfectly functional. Be aware, ASA is a little bit stiffer but that also means it's a little bit more prone to cracking. This is ASA. I'm using ASA on this printer. And by cracking, I mean, if you go do a, a Z negative China, ABS will flex a bit more and you might not break anything. Whereas ASA, you might not have enough flex to not break anything, but it's a stiffer printer. So trade-offs. Do I know if a V02 release is being worked on? Potentially. Uh, Fabrico, $50. Thank you, appreciate it. He has some really good PI beds and uh, some black textured PI beds. And soon, black textured? Oh, okay then. Uh, here's $50 from whiskey to make builds go smoother. I can dig that. I will say the, um, I gotta run another print. The, um, the carbon fiber stuff's pretty cool. So don't go Z negative China. Correct. Don't go Z negative China. You're gonna have a bad time if you do that. Okay, so we got the four feet. We got the accent parts attached because you know accents gotta look good. Uh, M5 nuts and it looks like it doesn't matter which way they go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, yes, it, we gotta get these nuts and then put them in the printer. Black textured PI. Oh, it's black textured PI. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that I can dig. I, I love. The only problem with black PI um, is when you start a print remotely and the camera is kind of like facing downwards on an angle like this one is. Um, it's kind of hard to make sure your first layer is going on good if you're printing with black. Because it's like, is it printing? Is it not printing? I can't really see too well. And what holds these on? An M310 and an M38. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Okay. M5s and M3s. Ooh, what am I doing? What am I doing? 
I, I just had it. There we go. Okay. So it's M3s on the front two and M5s on the side. Yeah, okay. like yeah so m38 and m105 or m510 okay i am going to get the uh the ladder of elevating yeah this is happening Okay, so the M5s, you actually have to have the nuts going a certain way because they need to clear. Like the big friendly giant, look up. What? Or the, what is it, big green giant? What was the kid's show with the giant? The look up, look way up. There's a kid show with a giant. I can't remember what what it's called. Plus one tallness. The problem is, I'm you know, five, five ten and a half, something like that, and uh, my bench is like forty eight inches, and then this printer is you know another X. Friendly Giant, there you go. I knew there was a show. One. Fabrico loves to hype products. You know what? The products are good. No problem with hyping them. I mean, Jason from LDO pops in here and says the V2 kit's coming out soon, and y'all are like, yeah. Which, let's be honest, you know, he does make good shit. Got it, flaunt it. Pretty much.
Uh, how many extra wires needed for the new tool head? Three. Uh, power. Power in, power out. So ground, live, neutral, whatever the heck it's called in power land. And then a uh, signal pin. So you need three wires. Um, they don't need to be heavy gauge. They can just be like, you know, was it 24 or whatever everyone normally runs? LDO in the UK. LDO is in uh, Shenzhen, China. They are a Chinese company. They sell through various resellers, though. Jason, I believe, is in California, though. Did Fizek send the missing hot end? Yep. Got it right here. Brand new in the box. The, uh, they did rush it. DHL. And one more. Didn't ask. Tongue out. Oh, there it is. Like, where is it? Uh, Chelsea four two three twenty dollars. Thank you. Appreciate it. Didn't ask. Ooh. 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 That's some. That's some in jokes. That is some in joke. Like, all of four people are going to get that. There's the puppy. About time he showed up. There you go. Where are you guys at? Oh, he, normally he wasn't coming down. Normally he's sitting outside the door. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, nom, nom, nom. Oh, and the little guy? Are you okay? You're you're somewhat dressed. Where is your shirt? Okay, you want to say hi? Okay. Oh, actually, camera's right there. Say hi. Look at the camera. Say hi. Say hi. Hey, don't play with the printer. Say hi. Yeah, it's the printer. Look there. Say cheese. Click. Hey. <laughs> Have you been silly? Did you go outside? Oh. You've been playing on your tablet? Oh, you are so lucky we got you one for Christmas. Oh, don't play with the nut. Hey, what color is this? What color is that? Orange. Yeah, what color is that? What? What color is that? Uh, silver. Orange. What color is this? Yeah. What's that guy? Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. No, no? Daddy's working, though. See, this is what I got to put up with. Yeah, you, yeah, but no. How many How many nuts are there? One, two, three. Yeah. What do you want for dinner tonight? Okay, here. You want to give a treat, Dakota? Here. Give that, Dakota. Oh. Here, give it. No. Oh, you dropped it. Here. Here, give that, Dakota. Give it, Dakota. Oh, no, just drop it. Okay. Okay. You gonna let Daddy finish? Okay. Yep. I got nothing else here. Mama has it. No, you can't go in the printer. Okay. Did I put that one on? No. Okay. Ah, distractions. Distractions. Everyone's saying doggo. Uh, Mini Nero looks just like you. I would hope so. Um, 
Are those veggies? I, I don't know. He has a ton of treats. Uh, hold it. Yeah, little guy's three and a half. Dog's almost ten. Uh, blah, blah, blah. DHL reliable can They're pretty good. So there you go. There's uh, the doggo. You guys want the doggo? There's the doggo. Okay, back up. Sheesh. J, Doggo and Family, $5. Thank you, appreciate it. So I guess they weren't outside. He just, normally that dog comes down right away when I come in this room. But uh, I did check, he, he wasn't out there earlier. So. He must have not been interested there for a minute. Doggo and Family. Go. Okay. Chop, chop, get it done. I'm working on it. Uh, and now we got to put the foots on. And that is a foot, rubber foot, M5, M560. So where are the feet? There are the feet. Five sixteen, which is right there. Yeah, LDO's fees do kind of uh, blow. That that part is sure. They they their timing is good. It still sucks though when the package shows up though, and you're. Uh, Make sure you answer the door with your credit card in hand. One foot. Ah, ah, ah. Could you 3D print the feet? You could. Remember, the whole weight of the printer is on them. So... For those wondering why I built the frame on the quartz thing, um, this is how flat my table is. I'm, I'm tempted to go get a, um, I'm waiting for it to go on sale, get like a, a bamboo countertop. And then when it shows up, just cover this whole table with liquid nails and just put it on top and just kind of float it flat. And then just, uh, I'll gain about another inch of table, like it'll go up an inch, which whatever, but uh, at least it'll be flatter than currently. Cause right now my, my tabletop, for those curious, uh, this is like five eighths plywood on top of a, a wooden frame that I made. And then it this is literally like 24 inch stick on linoleum tile. <laughs> uh, ooh, Jason, $50, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, LDO 2.4 kit. We're released soon after New Year, ship end of January, but arrival to reseller maybe middle end of March by boat. Yeah, that's that part's gonna suck. It's gonna get stuck on a boat because he's shipping it, you know, many of them in sea cans to the resellers. Um, but some sellers may pre-order. Um, so there you go. Jason's a cool dude. He's always allowed to come visit. And hopefully, um, if the border opens again, because it's bloody closed again, well, 
I can go over, but I got to get a, a PCR test before they let me back into my country. Um, uh, Rapid TCT Detroit in May. I believe you guys are going, and I'm. That's 20 minutes from my house. Well, 40 minutes once you factor in crossing the border. Um, so I will be going. So there we go. Okay, so it shows how to do all four of them. So make sure they're pointing inward. Okay, we're good. So we got all four on. And now we're building the gantry. So um, let's flip this into its nominal orientation. And there we go. It's uh, It's got feet. It's got feet. It's got feet. Okay, so I think that's it for the frame for a bit. So now we're moving on to our carriage, our X carriage. So um, I'll put this in storage for now. There we go. And plug in the heat iron because we are doing some uh, heat sets. Don't melt the camera wide. Okay, so I need... That guy. That guy. That guy. That guy. But I have two of these. And a bunch of heat sets. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Uh, RWD, pretty much. You like to experiment with super high temperature i would love to play around with peak and whatnot the problem is it's 400 dollars a spool and i don't print anything that needs that <laughs> like you know if, if i was like you know doing some dental stuff every now and then you know hey i'm, I'm doing dental molds or you know i could justify peak somehow maybe for v2.4 kits like i think joel even said it on like one of his uh more recent streams uh, or his most recent stream, he mentioned like, yeah, he has a roll of peak somewhere that's like $400 a spool, and it just kind of sits there, and he doesn't do anything with it because he doesn't need to do anything with it. Because let's be honest, most people don't need peak. It, it's just kind of like a an EP thing that, oh, my printer can print peak. It's like, cool. You can't, you don't use it for anything, except to say you can do it, but... If you need to print peak, buy a machine that can print peak. You're not building one. Uh, Lector, 20 euro, waiting on the 2.4 kits. Aren't we all? Aren't we all?
Uh, do you think the next revision of 2.x will change the DIN rail mounting blocks uh, used in the Trident? I hope the ones on 2.0 are going to add an extra rail and works quite well. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't been following that too closely on what's being... Uh... Remember, I'm not a CAD guy, so when, you know, work's being done on updates, I'll, I'll follow, but I, I don't really dive into it too much because uh, I, I, I can't contribute much. Um... And especially for like that kind of stuff. I do know a bunch of stuff from 2.4 or a lot of stuff in the 2.4 R2 revision is based on stuff in Trident. So. Try not to burn myself here. Got a new heat set tip. Oh, is that for, is that one from you? Then awesome, thank you. I had a bunch of random. Several people have my address, and I had a bunch of random stuff to throw up, show up from multiple people because I know multiple people that got doubles of some things. So I don't know who to thank because I don't know who sent what. <laughs> so if you sent me something over the holidays, thank you. I got like two people sent me different. Uh, uh, silicone mats after I spilled stuff. Oh, it doesn't match. It, it This is more like a bone white in, in proper lighting. It actually looks really good. Oh, geez. Uh, Jason, 20. Thank you. Appreciate it. LDO, 24 kits will have 300 size and 350 size. 300 size in January, 350 in Feb. March, LDO kits will have never more filter parts. Uh, input shaper, LED set, and Minster free kit. What's Minster? Uh, but not include the hot end. Yeah, so you got to put your own hot end in, which makes sense nowadays with all the the licensing and all that hoo ha and all the crap going on. Just roll your own hot end. You can you can grab hot ends anywhere. Okay, uh, so there we go. We've got that part with the part preparation done. And now we're putting together those. So. Batch coder, 999. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, hi, the Trident 1.9. It's Trident. 1.9 doesn't exist. It's V1.8 and then Trident. There, there is no 1.9. Uh, is for a 250Z build height, but the kit description says 240. Um, it depends on, depends on sourcing and how they cut the lead screw. Yeah, you might be able to eke out 250 full. Um, you got to be careful with belt. Or actually, no, there is no belt crush on a 2.4 on a on a Trident, um, like on a 2.4, but. It, there's some variance depending on how you mount things and whatnot. So. Hi, the Trident 1.9. Okay, so right now we're building this. So. But the kit description says 240 millimeters. Is their kit fully 1.9 updated, bottom or is this the one bottom part? It's the other bottom part. Okay. So. M540, and we're doing that. So. Flip it. Yeah, it really depends on your bed and standoffs as well, as uh, Steve said. There, remember, Vorons are self-source printers, so you you may see some variation. You you may see depending on sourcing and how thick your bed is and whatnot. These aren't commercial printers where they're all built the same, so you you might see a little bit of wobble. So, 
five nuts. Echo two, Papa two. Thank you for becoming a member. Ah, don't drop the nuts out. Okay. Just need to greet my wife. Yes, this will be our next printer. Love you, heart decoration. that and then M540 button heads or yeah socket head sorry together uh lugwig five euro thank you appreciate it just need to greet my wife yes this will be our next printer love you okay <laughs> so lugwood's wife um apparently he's building one of these next so just so you're aware when all the packages start showing up this is why Okay, now tight, go there. Okay. And then GT20 tooth idler with an M540. Uh, don't over tighten and this screws into plastic. So. is a little bit of float here that's okay this will just help with it if it's out of alignment it'll just find its home and the screw bottoms out and then don't tighten anymore just go till the screw don't go anymore with a little bit of force and then just stop because if you screw too much you'll actually crack it down here can i show you the model number it's a lrs 25.5 um, if you're, if you want to know what was in the kit specifically, I did live stream the whole kit unboxing and I looked at everything. Uh, Semdim Bone Broder, uh, 499 euro. Thank you. Appreciate it. Just got my fifth for trying to build. I'm super excited. Thanks again for all the help. I'm excited that you're excited. Just got into PIF for a uh, did I enjoy Spider-Man? Yes. Excited. Yes. Spider-Man was very good. Help. So we have that side built, and now we do the other side. Am I correct? The purge bucket mod will not work. I'm I've never run that mod, so I'm not 100% sure. Maybe, maybe not.
Yeah, pies are, are stupidly priced right now. It, it's anything with a chip in it is a pain in the butt to find. Um, unfortunately, there's no real good alternatives. There's like orange pies and whatnot, which y you can get them to work sometimes, but they've kind of got issues. They all have some quirk or issue that makes them not the greatest. So it's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't. So it's like either suck it up and pay the premium for a pie if you can get one or suffer with the deficiencies that, you know, using an orange pie has. Or another system on a chip. Okay, so I got that screwed in. And then put the other ones in. So when I'm screwing these tight, I'm just making sure that the parts are uh, lined up. So just like visually look at the parts as you screw them tight and just make sure everything's pretty much lined up as best as possible. Doesn't have to be, you know, absolutely 100% perfect, but the more in line things are, the less problems you'll probably have. Managed to use an orange pie PC and it worked like a charm. It, it does work. I have run, um, I've installed Clipper on a, a, an orange pie zero, but there's like issues with the Wi-Fi. Um, when it comes to updates down the line, like creating a, a self-install image is apparently a big pain in the problem. So like, you know, right now with Clipper, how you can just install Fluid OS or Mainsail OS and you're, you're good to go. That isn't really quite the case with them because you have to like do it manually and it, it doesn't quite work right apparently so we go we got our two xy idlers all good to go man the colors on this camera suck 540, don't over tighten. Oh, I skipped ahead into this automatically, but whatever. Okay, so now we're putting those two together. M340, M330, and we put that in the back. So. It's so weird when you get to spots where you gotta put like hexes in and it's like, oh yeah, these don't all use um, heat sets. <laughs> and a tip, if you ever need to like get a, a hex at the bottom of a hole and you wanna make sure it's straight, use a long screw from the other side, screw it in the nut and then pull it through. And then that way you'll make sure that it's seated properly and you're not trying to like push it in on an angle or whatever. M340 and M330. 40s up top. Where's the 30 go? I had a 30. Here. 
an inductive probe with M330s. So I guess we're putting the probe in already. Are you probe? It's in the other container. Probe. Uh, I plan on using Stealth Burner eventually. So, I'm building this stock first um, according to everything that comes in the kit and according to the manual. Um, just so those following at home can follow along. So this is a stock build. I'm going to get it done. I'm going to get it up and running. We'll play around with it a bit. Get a few prints out of it. And then I'll do any upgrades or mods to it. So I'm building this stock first. Good night, going to bed. Going to bed already? Oh man, it's only 4.30. Gotta get my, gotta get my G Fuel. All shaken up. Okay, T-Nut orientation. So this is uh, the E extrusion, which I believe is the longest one I have left. Yeah. Or no, the second longest one I have left. Yeah, yeah. So E extrusion. And we're putting T-nuts as shown. I can do that. Are you dragging the dog here with treats, Calvin? Hey. Where's Mama at? Go find Mama. Hey. Go find Mama. The little guy walks in the room, stands there, and just throws a treat on the floor. The dog gets the treat and then walks back out. So he's like trying to drag the dog in here with treats or lead the dog in here with treats. Which is cute, but. Okay, five on the bottom. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not that he likes being in here. He just knows there's treats in here now. And it's because of you guys. Because of you. Okay, carriage time. So, our last rail, the MGN 12. So, again, for those that are running um, a V2 and you want to do the M12 mod, for a single M12 rail or MGN12 rail on your uh, X instead of the dual MGN9, build the gant. You could build the this gantry drops right in, so I could do this mod to this printer right here with uh, an MGN12 in my existing hardware. I just don't have an MGN12, and this is working just fine. And I'm lazy. So,
What's that spray? It's just white white lithium spray. White lithium grease. Um, apparently you should be using PTFE, but I don't have that, so I'm just using white lithium. No, that's normally what I use. Um, I do have some, some of my printers I use super grease, which is PTFE based, which is apparently a bit better, but again, if it works, it works. It's a 3D printer. It's not a high speed CNC machine. You're not having any cutting loads on it. It's not operating in a high temperature environment. Um, this doesn't count as a high temperature environment. So really any, uh, pretty much most lubes will work. I prefer grease over oil. It lasts longer. Again, every other. Fifty. Oh man, I can never remember. Swedish something crone, I think. Buy the kid a shirt. Hey, for anyone who has a toddler, how 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 um, reliable is it for them to keep their clothes on? Because uh, if you have a kid, yeah 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 no. At least he has pants on. Fifty fifty, exactly. One thing I gotta be careful of, I gotta make sure he doesn't decide to do what kids do sometimes. Those are always optional for my kids. Yeah, kids just love being naked. They're just kids. Okay. Uh, Jeremy Webb, $2. Do you think Revo is higher flow than a V6? It is a bit higher. Um. So before I put a Revo in here, I had a Mosquito, a standard flow Mosquito, first gen standard flow Mosquito. I was able to bump up my speeds and feeds ever so slightly uh, with a Revo. So in terms of standard flow hot ends, a Revo is about the, the most you'll get out of a standard flow hot end compared to other standard flow hot ends out there. How long will I be streaming for today? Um, probably once we get this gantry portion in the machine, because I started at two, and I do have to make food for the fam at some point. So we'll probably uh, call it quits once I get the uh, the X gantry in. That that seems like it would be a good uh, end point there. So it's evenly split in the middle. Yep, we're good there.
Chef 2, what's on the menu? Um, leftover prime rib roast from uh, Christmas. I'm just going to throw on the barbecue quick to warm it up. It's leftover mashed taters. High flow Revo coming. Yeah, it, there is. It'd be dumb for them not to make a high flow variant of the Revo. But considering they're doing everything in house, there's a global pandemic. There's production issues in terms of just getting everything ramped up and whatnot. They're they're sticking with what's going to sell the most, and obviously, what's going to sell the most is a V6 compatible, a micro compatible because it's the easiest to machine, um, standard flow variant. They're, they're going after the meat and potatoes first, which makes sense when you're bringing something new to market. You, you, you make the version that sells the most first, and then you start doing the niche stuff. Is that a huge purge block? It's, uh, yeah, it's doing a multi-material print. We got ourselves a, oop. Got ourselves this little Aztec guy, and there's the purge block because you have to purge a ton of filament when you're doing multi-material to get the color out. Okay, where are we at? Where are we at? So we got that, we got that. Now we put these guys on. these screws slightly loose and leave loose okay yeah because you if you don't want to tighten these screws up right away if you if you tighten these screws up this is where you get like racking issues and whatnot so you, you want to let them float a little bit um and then you go through and you actually tighten everything up once you're uh at the rat de-racking stage which if you're curious about de-racking i have a video on my channel about it Uh, they said they have a high flow prototype. Um, I, I can't say much because I've, I've spoken to people about it. Um, it like, I, I know it's being worked on, but obviously there's different manufacturing that goes into it because it's, it's obviously not the same product. So um, there will be differences and they're just working on getting capacity up for current models or the first model. Because demand is pretty high for it, from what I understand. Plus, there's also OEM orders and whatnot. So, they're going to be flooded with orders for the, you know, standard ones for a while. Uh, Patrick. For kids and treats for 200 the dog Swedish something crone. I keep forgetting what the SE stands for. Uh, shirt for kid and treats for dog fun. He, he, he has shirts. He just refuses to wear them. And this is a, under here, M530 uh, with a shimp. Swedish Krona. Is the E just part of the way Sweden is shortened in Swedish? I know it's Swedish. I just can't remember what the E stands for. Is there anywhere else to buy a kit other than AliExpress? Um, for Trident? Um, AliExpress, they're... Go on the Voron Discord. Go to the, the look at the um, vendors. Look for one that has a flag with your country on it, or a country that ships to your country, and see what they have. Because there's a bunch of vendors on the Voron Discord that have stores. They're, it's just easier to find them through the Voron Discord. Um, that have stores that sell Voron components, so or anything related to Voron. Because you can't be a vendor on the Voron Discord unless you at least sell some Voron stuff. Okay, so now we are putting this in the printer. Put there, put that there, put this back over here, put that over here, get 
my machinist square and put it up here. Go on the main camera. Uh, get the printer out of storage. And then we are installing this uh, using some M316s. Where are my M316s? M316s. They're in a baggie. Sweden. SE. Okay, that makes sense. Svensk in Krona. Okay. Uh, Magic Studio. Oh yeah, Magic Studios. Uh, Jesper. Swedish Krona. 100. See, I'm learn. I'm, I'm learning. Swedish. Uh, lots of Swedish Krona today. I gotta do these Euro uh, European friendly streams more often. And then what I gotta do is say how awesome you guys are, and how you're better than the North American crew when I stream at North American today. times. And then when I stream during North American times, I say the opposite. And that way I get even more engagement. It's all about engagement, right? It's all about the YouTube game. Gotta play the game, right? <laughs> so also another reason you need to uh, keep these loose is simply for the fact that you might need to like spread them out to get the uh, spacing right. There we go. Cutting, drilling, tapping your own extrusion is very satisfying. Oh, if, if you're into that stuff, yes. Um, this frame right here, I I ordered the frame from Asumi. I cut, I drilled and tapped it all myself. Uh, I didn't drill anything because it's got corner cubes. Um, my switch wire frame, I cut everything myself, along with the frame for V00 down here. Um, I, I, I literally cut, drilled, and tapped all that one myself. Um, and I will never do it again because, oh my god, it's a waste of time. After you do it once or twice, it's like, yeah, no, I'm going to pay somebody to do this going forward. It is uh, not worth my time. Can confirm Nero is playing both sides of the pond. Big brain, big brain. But here's the here here's the inside scoop. You're all awesome in your own ways. Have I seen vertical fine lines? It, it's... I'm not getting into the VFA discussion today. <laughs> but basically, it's pretty much every printer is going to suffer from it in some way or another. Um, it's, it's one of those things that's just there in 3D printing. It's very hard to just figure it out because there are so many things that can actually cause that problem. It is not a single uh, source problem. There are multiple things that can cause vertical fine line artifacts or VFAs or issue sixes or whatever. Um, you can have wobble in your lead screw. You can have issues with your extruder. You can have, there's there's a million and one things that can cause it. Are all my flathead screwdrivers. Okay, so on uh, the one side, you're only putting two screws in and that's because you got a little pod here for your end stop. So what I'm doing right now is your rail, um, take a look here. So I have both carriages on, okay, X, Y joints. Ooh, that is, ooh, that's butter. Ooh, that's nice, that's nice. Um, because we spaced it out, the spacing's not the same. So this rail is centered on this extrusion. So what I'm doing is basically this is loose, the extrusion's loose. I'm, I'm using a flathead screwdriver to kind of, because I'm OCD about it, to make it so the gap is equal on both sides. There we go. Okay. 
Now I'm just gonna go and finger tighten these again. It's not tight yet, so there's going to be racking issues, but I'll, I'll de-rack it later. Tapping is an activity that's very smoothing to my ADD. Until you have to tap, um, what was it? 80, 84? I think it was 42 times 2. Yeah, 42 times 2. Uh, M, or 1024 holes in high hard h13 or no hardened h13 by hand drill and tap 80 84 holes 832 quarter inch deep and hardened h13 by hand that was a fun day at work that was a very fun day at work or you know machining forgets to tap the m64 hole and you have to tap that by hand too Okay, so we have that all in. Let's put this guy in. So we're gonna take these two screws out because I just put them in here just to hold it together while we kind of got everything together and put some M516s in with our little bridge. Yeah. Gantry looks smooth. It is. It feels very smooth. So. Credit. Where credit is due, the gantry is smooth. I can dig it. Okay. Uh, squaring the gantry. Okay, I guess we're doing that right now. So. So if you're curious on how to square a gantry up, click there and oh, hey, look, some guy named Nero3DP back before I rebranded um, has a video on how to square a gantry. Do that video if you have questions about it. It's a pretty good video. Actually, one of my better performing ones. And honestly, let's get as close as you can, because again, you can, if you can't get it absolutely perfect, just get as close as you can, and then you can dial it out once you go to actually uh, with the belts. So, don't worry if you can't get it perfectly perfect at this step. And then also, if you find that it's okay on one side, if you can only make it good to one side, um, usually that means your frame's at a square somewhere. And even if you try everything and you still can't get it, you know, it's always good at the front or it's always good at the back and it's never good at the other side. Um, personally, I square it up to the front.
or try and split the difference. But. And then of course, as you move it, you should make sure that you're not feeling any resistance anywhere, which that's butter. That is butter. Uh, good evening, good evening to you too. Okay, so we're good there. Uh, and then belts. So we're not going to belt it up. Um, and the belting is a little bit different on here. Their belts are actually held in by the carriage. So I'm just going to throw the carriage on right now just for appearance. Um, but I'm just going to put like one screw in it just to hold it. Or two for now. And what holds it on? Uh, M38s. But we're probably going to call it there. Uh, what are you printing on the Switchfire? It's just a multi-material print. It's a little Aztec dude. have to put all these screws back together because I got like little baggies of screws everywhere now. Okie dokie. So this is where we are leaving off today. I don't have a twist tie. I have a twist? Is that a twist tie? No, that's a piece of wire. I could have sworn I had a twist tie. <laughs> oh well. Stick. That'll hold. There we go. Okay. So there is where we are leaving off today. Multi material. No, it's just a, a multi color print. But yeah, so we're going to end it there. We got 10 minutes. I'm going to end the print at uh, 5. So we got 10 minutes. I'm going to leave the floor open. Uh, if anyone has any questions or wants me to go over anything I went over on the stream, um, now is your time. Let me check Discord if anyone's messaged me. Remember, if you try to message me on Discord during a stream, it doesn't pop up. I don't get notified. Uh, Timmet asking about torque to spec. Um, so if you're quite confused about how tight your screw should be, remember righty tighty, lefty loosey. If righty tighty becomes righty loosey, you tightened it too much. Did I order a V minion? No, I was looking at it, but it's 800 Canadian. So it's a little bit of a... Uh... Uh, it's a little bit of a steep, uh, steep price for something I'm, I'm tempted to buy on a whim. So, is the Fizek Spider any good? Um, they had QC issues on the first ones. Apparently that's fixed now. I haven't tried any others other than the one I have in here, which is a first gen. This one has a Spider 2.2. I'll be able to check that one later. So as it is right now, if it works, it works. Um... Could I use a stack instead of the tooth idlers? Yes, you can. Um, actually, this is the first Voron I've built in a while that actually uses tooth idlers. This one uses smooth idlers. That one uses smooth idlers. Switch wires, all smooth idlers. Um, they got bigger bearings, less likely for the little itty bitty pin bearings that are in these types of idlers to explode. Um, I'd rather have more reliability than the potential of slight VFA belt tooth pattern in my prints. And usually you only see that belt tooth pattern if you over tighten your belts. So don't over tighten your belts and you shouldn't see it because I posted some pictures on my Twitter. Let me pull up here. Ooh, a lot of notifications. I posted a picture the other day. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. So, um, here you go. So these are smooth idlers, okay? 
These are printed with smooth smooth idlers. Um, I don't see teeth marks. <laughs> I'm okay with smooth idlers. Zoom in even more. Maximum resolution. So yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, Linus R, seven months. Oh, geez. Cruise a bed on a 2.4. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Um, if you're okay, you'd have to mount the carriage, I believe, because the bed itself is just PCB and you don't want that flexing. So you'd have to mount the carriage. And I think it's only 230 on the, the, it's 250 on the X and 230 on the Y, I believe. I think you can make it work though. Been wrestling my switch wires build video for three hours the printed parts have awful tolerances um i do remember mine i had to reprint something because something was a little funky but i reprinted it and it was fine i think I, there was either i either had to under extrude slightly or over but i can't remember what it was and i just chalked it up to just being my printer at the time bigger bearing is more important yes bigger is better -er. For bearing stacks, uh, why no thin shim between the bearings? Because you don't want that. That will cause your bearings to do uh, this kind of thing, and you don't want them doing that. You you want the bearings right on each other. Um, you, you don't want a spacer in there. There's there's plenty of room for that because that's where everywhere else that's how they're 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 designed for that. Do any of my printers have breakout boards for the carriage or hot ends? Um, just my switch wire. It has a heart K board. And I actually have an extra one. I might put one on here when I do the stealth burner upgrade. I don't know. We'll see. But I do have an extra heart K board here that I might use on something someday. Favorite mod? I don't mod my printers that much. Um, the only printer I have that's running a mod is the heart K tool head board uh, and the enraged rabbit carrot feeder stuff on the switch wire back here. Ta da. And then uh, the V0 down here has a belted Z. Other than that, all my Vorons are stock. Other than like random sizes on Tallboy. Anything good for Christmas? Um, My wife got me a 12-year bottle of Tomatin Scotch. That's pretty good. I don't know. I'm in my mid-30s and I have a kid. I don't really request big things for Christmas. My mom got me a Lowe's gift card. Uh, does the breakout board make it easier? Uh, it just cleans up the wiring. It's not required. Uh, the breakout board for the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder, there is a specific one for that it supports the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder. It has an additional end stop on it. It just makes the wiring cleaner, um, but it's not required. Nice scotch. It is very nice. I had some last night. Probably have some more too. It's a little early right now, so we got some, uh, we got the G Fuel. Got myself the, the best Christmas present though, the XL. Ah, yes, the, the pre-order for a printer I'll probably get next year. Maybe it'll be next year's Christmas present. Uh, endoscopic camera on the stealth burner. That could be done. I believe there's enough room if you take out one of the LEDs, you might be able to put the other, like replace one of the LEDs with the camera. Um, routing the wires be a little fun. It's not something I, I don't know. It, it, it's, I don't know. It's not something I would see myself. I'd rather have a better view of the full printer. Cause remember the problem with the endo cam, um, I believe most, you can only use one webcam, uh, per like fluid or main sale or octoprint. You can only have one webcam and I'd rather be able to see the whole print bed and see if stuff's warping or going bad than one that's like plugged right at the nozzle that you can't really see what else is going on during a print for print monitoring. So yes, it makes really cool videos and time lapses and whatnot, and it's really cool, but I think a traditional webcam is much more practical than an endoscope cam. Any prints on the Super Racer lately? No, um, I gotta take it apart. I had a piece of filament broke off and it's stuck between the extruder and the tool head, and I can't undo the freaking Bowden couplings on either end. They won't come undone. 
So I need to take apart the extruder to get at the piece of PT or of filament so I can pull it out because it's below the gears. Yeah. <laughs> Not true. Okay, so if yeah, if you can't have two webcams and you can cycle between them, it makes a little bit more sense. Requires some tinkering though. You need to make a second config file and then add second webcam URL to the fluid. Okay, so it is possible. Uh, has there been any thoughts on a Trident with Belt Z? At that point, just build a 2.4, honestly. Um, you can do it. You'd have to re-finagle a bunch of stuff because the problem is you'd have to have an idler here, here, and here that be able to to take the weight i don't know it you, you can do it but would you want to what do you get from it? i don't know but has there been any thought uh, nobody on the team has looked into that at all Uh, the bed would be heavy. No. People have done belted beds in the past without much issue. Uh, Thomas, 10 euro. Thank you. Appreciate it. You didn't ask a question, but... Cheers. Uh, two minutes. Two minutes, guys. Two minutes. Unfortunately, this print is almost done. It's at 92%. So, if you want to see how this little guy turns out, make sure you're following me on Twitter, at 3 Nero. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you're subscribed to the channel for all, you know, so you don't miss these in the future. What else? Ring the bell. Do the bell thing. Click the bell because that's what YouTubers do, right? They ring that bell. Um, what else? If you want to support the channel, consider becoming a member. I do a monthly members-only stream, and you get to see videos a little bit early uh, if I get them edited in time. Um, what else? What else? What else do I need to say before I wrap it up? Um... This is a FISEC kit. They sent it to me. Everything, words and opinions are my own. Um, I will do a final review on the kit once it's done. So far, end of part two. Everything seems to be okay. I know already I'm going to be critiquing their wires. I'm not the electrical. I'm probably going to have stuff to say about their kit. Um, what else? What else? I don't know. Uh... The Switchwire build series made me realize how far the channel has come. I thought the Switchwire build series was pretty comparable to the modern. It's the original. It's the original V0 build and the original, uh, like the tall boy build, um, the original V2 build. That, yeah, that's painful. So I'm really looking forward to Jason sending me a V2.4R2 kit um, because yes, I've already built a 2.4 on stream, but. Um, I'd like to redo it in better quality with proper audio. <laughs> Do I take the apron off? No, apron stays on always. Okay, so I think I'm going to end it there. Go figure out some dinner. Um, for those that stuck through the whole stream you guys are awesome for anyone who tuned in you're awesome uh for anyone who donated during the stream you're awesome because of you guys you help support the things i do the content i create you make it all possible um what else shout out to who are we gonna shout out who are we gonna shout out who are we gonna shout out uh, i don't know ray for muting that one guy who was being annoying i think it was ray good on you ray Okay, enjoy the rest of your enjoy the rest of your year. Um, I will see you on Sunday. I don't know what time I'm going to stream Sunday. I have Monday off, so I'm thinking I might do the stream a little bit later in the day. Um, but we'll see. Subject to change. Follow me on the Twitters if that's where I post all updates and whatnot. So enjoy the rest of your year, folks. Have a happy new year. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Peace. <laughs>